Hello and welcome to In the Court of the Winter King. Today we're going to review. What are we going to review? Today, today we will be reviewing Led Zeppelin 2. This yep. is a follow on from our Led Zeppelin 1 review, yep. uh, which we did a week and a half ago, which has had fantastic response on, on the YouTube. It has. 30 views and 3 likes. That means that we're basically famous now. Aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. That is more than I could possibly have hoped for. It is. <laughs> Thanks for the likes. Big thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah. So today we're going to be reviewing Led Zeppelin 2. Yeah. There it is. So I would imagine they would have had a lot of time to think about album covers. Yes. Whereas early on, they didn't. This was still early in their career. They were touring relentlessly in America. This was the same year as as Led One. Is One? Yeah, only a few months later. It written and recorded on the road, so this was recorded. It wasn't recorded in one studio, it was recorded a bit. You know, they'd record the guitar in one studio and then vocals in the next studio and then mix in the next studio. Um, and in that sense, it's miraculous. The production is fantastic. It, it's, it's an old recording, so the engineering is old fashioned, obviously, but the sound of it is awesome. It really is. It's le legendary production on this album. And the fact that this was recorded while they were performing so much, I think really sort of contributes to the album. It's yeah, a sort of it's a playing album, it's a jamming album. You, you can tell it's come out of jams, but in, in in the best way. Yeah. They they hadn't had time to sit down and write yet, not really. So in that sense, it's it is it is a wonderful thing. But it is that's why it's considered the definitive heavy rock album, the the heavy rock album. So shall we, um, you know, go on to track one? Yep, okay, first track. Yeah. They ripped, obviously, yeah. they ripped that off Top of the Pops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Nick from Top of the Pops. Um, um, I hope all the Led Zeppelin fans' heads explode. <laughs> they stole it from Alexis Corner. It is absolutely bizarre that you've got a Led Zeppelin riff opening Top of the Pops in the, in the 90s. Yes, well, it was in the seventies as well. Was it? Yeah, it, the Alexis Corner version. It, but it's—I don't know if it's ironic or what, it, because it wasn't a single. Obviously, Led Zeppelin didn't release singles in the UK. It is so simple. It is, you know, there's the Beethoven's Fifth main theme. Is the only thing simpler I can think of. Yeah. You got da 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 da, but the the other classic riffs like Smoke in the Water and Aqualung and Sunshine of Your Love. They're all, there's, there's more notes in them. Yeah. It's so simple, and, th and that's why it's profound and, and whatever. Because it, it does veer off into theremin territory and well, yeah. in a weird weird middle section. You've got the, the, the psychedelic section. Without the psychedelic section, it's incredibly simple. It's, I think this is a good example of good use of, of psychedelic stuff. If you're just doing sort of weird ooh, noises, mm. stuff like that, it's a bit, bit of a waste of time, but it resolves. Yeah, it, it's, and it's, it's Partially, it's a, it's, a, it's a really clever mix. It's the mix of all the noises. It's just perfect, and it builds, and then it it's the, it's the guitar solo back into the song. Yeah, that's a, it's a very very good opening track. Yeah, classic opening track, obviously. Yeah, and then we go on to track two. Yeah. What is and what should never be. Yeah, yeah. Now this this is a classic Led Zeppelin song. It's very significant, and it's it's where Plant started to write. This is this is a plant song really, and he's, he's really showing he's got this melodic thing going on, um, and it's a real it's a real song. It's not a riff. It's not anything like that. It's a real song, um, and they played it live right the way till '73. Not quite long enough to, to for it to be on the song remains the same, but very nearly. Um, it's on all the compilations. Um, it's just never done anything for me. It just doesn't work for me, and I don't. It's it's hard for me to relate to it because I'm, this is something I've listened to since I was a little kid, and at the time, my attitude to it would have been very different, and just not having a guitar solo would have been a problem mm -hmm. when I was thirteen. Okay, I said it took us to track three. Yeah, and track three is a song about. <laughs> it's a song about a lemon. Um, is it a song about a lemon? Apparently. It's Killing Floor, isn't it? It's Killing Floor. Yeah. yeah. It's actually Killing Floor. Um, I think the, the, the stories of plagiarism get a bit exaggerated at this point. However, 
the, there's an Albert King version, which is almost contemporary of this album, which sounds a lot more similar than the original. Interesting. Well, I mean, there's also the, there's the Hendrix version, and he just played it fast. Um, but that heavy, discordant stuff um, is Page. He wrote that. So then, you know, don't get too carried away. Yeah. It's not massively controversial. Mm. The, the stuff about lemons is from a different song, that's from Driving Riverside Blues by Robert Johnson. Um, but musically completely different. I think Robert Johnson nicked it from somewhere as well. Uh, a lot of these blues songs are like that. They're not yeah. nicked, they're sort of developed over time. Yeah. Classical yeah. origin. I mean, as far as, as the song itself goes, um, it's for me. It's not an album song. It's it's an excuse. I th I think it ties in with the the live performance thing. Yeah. And it's it's an excuse for some playing. Yeah. Ro well, Robert Plant to do do some, his lemon stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Do his lemon stuff and do some improvisation and, and stuff like that. As a as a track, it's too long. For my liking. Interesting. How long is it? Six minutes nineteen. Yeah. That's that's all the middle section, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I, th I think we sh we should give Plant. Uh, not plan. We should give Page a lot of credit for the guitar playing. That's good Jimmy Page guitar playing. Nothing like Jeff Beck, nothing like Eric Clapton. It's messy and it's dirty, he's got dirty fingernails and he's pulling the strings. And he's singing and plant singing a song about a lemon. Yeah, um, and that's Page. And that's in the way the guitar on the lemon song is, is Page at his best. There's the, the, there is better guitar playing to come in later albums, obviously. But mm -hmm. that's Classic page right there. Yeah. Okay. Next song? Next song. Next song. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> is the next <laughs> song. <laughs> yeah, um, this is a, it's, it, Thank you is a, a, another funny one. It's another plant thing. It's it should be so saccharine and so obvious and so naff and yet it works so fantastically well. I can't tell you why. It does. It, it's, it's a love song with, it, with no depth whatsoever. Yeah, and it's brilliant. I think. I I'm not I'm not a big fan of it. Fair enough. I'm not a big fan of it, but it's got a Hammond organ in there, so it does. Um, ex ex extended Hammond solo during the, the live performances or early live performances anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, next song. Uh, Heartbreaker. Right. Yeah. Um, Heartbreaker is very difficult to review because it is. Um, fundamental to heavy rock music um, and so in that sense it, it feels incredibly generic in everything it does um, but it is a good song obviously it's so influential though the there is a guitar solo in the middle when I say guitar solo I mean a solo guitar um, which is very very influential it's, uh, Jimmy Page is using pull-offs so he's not actually playing the the strings he's just going blah, 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 blah. Um, it is shockingly rough around the edges um, but that's page I, I I get the sense I mean with this album I think okay how does this how does this play live and I get the sense this would be an awesome track live yeah it's sort of, it start dun, dun, it really drives on bassy yeah. Yeah. grungy you could really get in there and then it sort of speeds up um, you can see everyone jigging around and then it, come, it comes back down, down, down in pace again. Yeah, and although the, there were concerts where they didn't play it, it was usually in the set and it remained in the set in some form right the way through, even if it was just an encore which they didn't always do, yeah. it was always there. I mean it's great, it's great Jimmy Page but it's also great Robert Plant vocals. It is, yeah. you got that sort of screen, I mean contrasting to the last song which obviously he didn't. You'd have to turn the record over yeah. on the CD. It does. It, it, it plays beautifully. Yeah. There you go. Thank you into Heartbreaker. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. I, I love that. I love that track. Now the next one, Living Loving May. She's just a woman. Yeah. Right. And it is a great scene from Heartbreaker into Living Loving May. I should say. I hate it. I, I really. You really dislike it. Yeah. It's. It does genuinely remind me of a Beatles sort of little head bobbing sort of do, do, sort of track. Do, yeah. Do, 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 do. Um, I think it's filler. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I haven't got a problem with the Beatles. It just it doesn't feel very Led Zeppelin. 
and uh, it feels more deep purple than Led Zeppelin, that one for me. He's filler, it's meh, an average song. And I think Plant himself was disparaging about it. If you watch the whole concert of Earl's Court 75, I don't know which day, but whichever one's on YouTube, at some point during that, Plant is disparaging about it. And if you watch that whole three hour concert, yeah. So that's Living Love in May, but next, next. Oh, what, what track? We've got to ramble on. Ramble on. Yeah, now th this is the epic of the album for me. This is the, the centerpiece of the album. Not a whole lot of love. Ramble on is the centerpiece of the album. It's, it's the, the big song. Um, and it, and it, it's, it's, it's very Zep because it's merging a few different styles. You've got folkiness and you've got heavy rock in there as well. Yeah. And it's Plant coming into his own, having some fun. Um, I think he's quite embarrassed now about the stuff about Lord of the Rings, I think that's ace. So. It's got a little, a quite an upbeat sort of feel to it. It is very upbeat. Which yeah. I think misrepresents the sort of arduous task that Frodo and Samwise went on to. There you've got the embryo of, of what they were becoming. They're just really good songwriters. Yeah. And there was just, there was a page plant thing, whatever that is, which is Lennon McCartney level, you know, and it was beginning at that point. And that's what you've got to ramble on. But it's funny, you look at that, I don't think ramble on. I look at that, I think, a lot of love and bring yeah. it on home. Yeah. Very strange. Yeah. But I'll tell you what is quite peculiar. To have a drum solo on an album. Yes. <laughs> Which brings us to track eight. <laughs> Moby Dick. Moby Dick, yeah. Um, very popular, very famous. Um, everybody loves John Bonham. He's supposed to be the best drummer in the world ever. Um, and it, it is quite, I suppose it is quite listenable, um, meh, but I'm not a Bonham fan, you know, that, that's my bad, you know, I would, I would give me Phil Collins or Bill Bruford or Ian Pace or that kind of thing rather than Bonham, but he does have a great sound and yeah. that is on this record. I have, to, I have to admit, I mean, you see Bonham performing that drum solo and it's impressive, yeah. Um, to listen to as a as a sort of spectacle in itself, it, it doesn't it doesn't quite cut it. Yeah, so finally, bring it on home. Bring it on home to you. Yeah, now bring it on home is two songs. There's the original bring it on home, which is obviously a cover version, but then it changes completely. You've got the second section, a Hendrixy riff, yeah. and a song, a Led Zeppelin song, but that's called bring it on home as well, which is weird. Yeah. Um, and I think in the end, they 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 name the two sections, bring it all back, and bring it home. Well, reportedly said that it it was just a short part, and it was a tribute to Willie Dixon. But mm. it's two minutes long. Yeah, there's two minutes of the, yeah. the whole song, it's the whole Willie Dixon song, and then yeah. the Led Zeppelin song. Yeah, and that, that's, the ending. Is that a tribute? <laughs> it's I mean, awesome. it's a hell of a tribute. Like, if you, if but you they didn't rename it. They used the name "Bring It On Home," which is, yeah. which is odd. But the Led Zeppelin version is is excellent. It's a very the blues section is very uh, true. Yeah, true, true to the original. Yeah, true to the original, and it sounds it sounds straight out of the Delta. Yeah, I it's, mean, it's not um, heavy dub or anything like that. It is just. The same. Yeah. I mean, you, you listen to sort of Fleetwood Mac blues and Stones blues uh, from a couple of years previous, and they sound good, but they do sound like that you can sort of tell that it's it's a band doing the impression yeah. of, of the blues. Whereas it doesn't it doesn't sound so much like that. No, it sounds it's pretty sincere. It does. It's funny that. Yeah. And uh, I think it's a good sort of portrait of. Where they've come from, yeah. to what to this what that's created. Mean. This is this is this is what has come from yeah. all that uh, that amalgamation of folk yeah. and blues and. And in that sense, it is a tribute. Yeah. It's, a, it's a successful tribute. But it's, it's where they were at that time, yeah. not what was to come. I think that's that's the point, isn't it? It's yeah. Like the riffy stuff. And... Yeah. Okay. Well, that was that was Led Zeppelin two. Yeah, that was Led Zeppelin two. Um, a great album. Knocked Abbey Road off the number one spot significantly they became much bigger at this point and no Sorry. singles please